Yes, you have to smile. Welcome to Fun Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. We're going to have a crap ton of fun on Friday. Crap ton. Because we're going to talk about wives' tales. Which means it's a lot of lies. Is it? Because I kept telling her when we met that she had a tail when she was born. And as a result, um, she had like dimples in her lower back and her mom probably had it in the attic somewhere. I That's the very, wives' tail. I have very sexy dimples on the bottom of my back. Thank you very much. I want to make fun of you. That wasn't actually a, a better one. I like that one. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying the... Uh, nobody can see this going on right now, but I'm getting a butt massage. I hear it. I can hear it. I'll vouch for that. There's vibrations going on. It's Friday. It's going to be tingling. Ah, what? <laughs> Speaking about tingly parts, <laughs> how are you feeling with your <laughs> burger? I want to call it a burger challenge, but it's not a burger challenge. I, it's a I, keto I, project. I've gone back and forth of using the word challenge as something else to describe it, but... It's uh, not really a challenge. It's not really. I, He's eating. I mean, that's really what Cameron challenge. The challenge is to keep eating and stay alive. Uh, it's going well. You guys all should know. You should be watching the vlog every day. It's posted. Come on. Pay I'm getting attention, cranky from people. it, apparently. That's actually what I tell everybody. How's Dr. Mike? I say cranky. I, I've been told I've been a little cranky. He's on the cranky side. I say he's looking for attention. <laughs> that's literally what I tell everybody. From Mr. Hollywood over here. He's cranky. I just got back from California. I'm just... Just. I at least looked at a watch. There's a time delay, and here I am. I'm back. Finally got here. So, let's talk about some of Shantae's tales. Yes, not the one up in the... Uh, not the one up in the attic in her mom's house there. Correct. You're pretty. Okay. <laughs> Chase my tail. Just kidding. <laughs> I could go so many ways with that. <laughs> Indeed. Not that many it's on camera. not your birthday anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my birthday weekend. Uh -huh. Great time for the glasses drop. So, you, yeah, these wives' tales, wise tales most of these actually came up because I asked people that I personally know, hey, tell me some wives' tales of nutrition and health, and thinking maybe they would say ones that I haven't heard of or not say ones that have been proven completely invalid, and that was not true. So a lot of these I thought were common sense of not being true anymore. Someone has some truth to it. So, so it's kind of like chicken soup for your brain, in this case here. That was one I did not put on here purposefully, but yes. We, we can complain and talk about how that's not true too. Brain right. soup. Mm, so brain. let's start with chicken soup for your cold. Sure. So why are you saying that chicken soups might not actually be the cure for the common cold? Because it doesn't do anything to help your immune system or make you feel better on the cold. Where it most likely came from is warm water helps with decongesting and everything in the sinuses. That's likely where the, the behind the truth of this came from, is that warm water lets you breathe a little bit easier. I mean, that's a standard way of helping it, and that does work. But as far as the chicken soup goes, there's nothing better in it compared to other things. I mean, having most of for the cold and flu are showing it help prevent it, not really treat it anyway. Shantae looks like she has something to say. Go ahead, wife. It, it just tastes good. And then you feel <laughs> like you feel better, you feel better. I was always given chicken soup and stuff. It was chicken soup and then watch uh, like Price is Right, and that's how you feel better. It is how you Wasn't feel in better. South Park, they found the cure, and it was based upon your culture, you had a certain food. So if you were a South Park redneck, you had to have what, chicken soup and Sprite, right? Yes. <laughs> and that was a cure. <laughs> that a man, Cole. I'm sure what we have margaritas and tacos, tequila. and you feel much better. Tequila makes everything better. Is that on your wife's tail list? No, but it should be added. It should be. <laughs> That's like the old... Uh, we have said that one before. The alcohol helps. It's antibacterial and it helps. It'll antibacterial, antiviral. The more it's in your blood, the less can survive. So put tequila in the chicken soup. That's the secret Tequila recipe. Tequila <laughs> lime chicken soup. Sounds delicious and amazing. Are we done yet? I just <laughs> usually add a, a turmeric and I make my chicken soup orange because turmeric does have antiviral properties. Lupe! Lupe! Chicken soup! Tequila! Por favor, señorita! Why don't we go here to uh, mold and bread? 
Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to this chicken soup and tequila. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have what she's uh, having. You, you give it a bread. bread. Uh, so this is another one that... You get, uh, a, th you get a thing of bread, and you, you look at it, and it's got a little green or some blue, and the idea is you cut it out, right? And yeah. it should be fun. Like, really like fun. Swiss cheese. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a really good bad comparison. It is a really good comparison to what you're about to talk about. Yeah, here, so I mean, you can cut out that color of the mold, and you're right, that mold is now gone. But I mean, just because you don't see microscopic things doesn't mean that microscopic things aren't there. Because they are, the mold spreads. So just because you cut out the part that you see, it's likely in everything else and spreading, especially since there's moisture and everything for it to spread. So you might as well just eat the moldy bread, the entire thing, if you're gonna cut out the rest. Not a suggestion, just say, it's the same stuff. But I mean, that was another thing I remember hearing. Why just cut it out? Right. And but Swiss cheese, I mean, it's not actually Much penetrating <laughs> into the cheese, so therefore you can't cut it out, and that's the whole point of having old, moldy cheese. <laughs> 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 moldy cheese. I love steamed Bear with a really dry old wine. Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha. So we're speaking about not at all wine. <laughs> you are typically not here in the Fit Lab. You have off on Mondays and Tuesdays, correct? Correct. Well. I figured that out why, and that's typically because I have an apple every single morning. <laughs> Only Monday, Tuesday They morning? say an <laughs> apple a day keeps the doctor away. Oh, this is getting cheeky now. <laughs> <laughs> you finally get to use it. I got to use it. Oh, is that, is that the word today? That is the word of the day. Since we launched Moose at first, she says, oh, he's so cheeky. He's cheeky. Okay. Huh. That was cheeky. Cheeky. Uh, so. No, that's my reaction is no. <laughs> uh, but, okay, be here on Monday and Tuesdays. So I won't eat apples anymore. And you don't eat apples anyway. You must not have eaten. Yeah, I think. I'm, well, you were gone this last Tuesday. Yeah, anyway, apples. It, it doesn't work. I didn't eat in California. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, I think there's some cheese and uh, crackers or bread product in the fridge still in the hotel room that I brought from the airplane with good intention to eat. Didn't happen. You left cheese? That, that's kind of sacrilegious. I was going on fumes and I found the pillow. You could be going on cheese fumes. Yeah. I should have given it to the guys smoking the large amounts of legal marijuana outside <laughs> of the window that was coming up. And they were going to eat the munchies sooner or later. Uh, he would have rated for more cheese. $49 plus tax per ounce, says the billboard. There's billboards out there. I thought that was a phenomenal price. Yeah, more money for cheese. Right? <laughs> and why? So what, yes, what's up with the apples? Why, does, why don't you show up when I eat apples? Uh, I, I hate rhyming, and that's probably about it. Otherwise, it doesn't really do much for your immune system. I didn't like the chicken soup. It was really just an emphasis of eating some fruit is good for you. And they put it in a rhyme to make it seem more important for you to memorize it. Now, apples do have vitamin A, which is an immune booster. Is there enough vitamin A, or should I have a whole bag of apples? No, and you should not. Uh, one apple has about 19 sugar. 19, oh god, that was bad. 19 grams of sugar. 19 sugars. 19 grams of sugar. That's a six ounce soda, like a six ounce uh, Dr. Pepper. And. You get a little bit of like quercetin and a few little pigments thrown in there, but mostly take a Dr. Pepper, drop a quercetin pill in there, and that's an apple. I think I'll take a Zevia <laughs> here tonight and uh, put a quercetin in there. That would likely like be better. like breakfast tomorrow. Just, no, just apples and scotch. We do, we do need a scotch breakfast. <laughs> just saying. It, it just came down to the correlations, kind of like, I use, like the idea of Cheerios is the gold standard for this. Watch a Cheerios commercial. Cheerio, people who eat Cheerios, sorry, have lower cardiovascular disease. Same it's on the, the box. It lowers cholesterol. I mean, come on, that must be true by eating Cheerios. Nope, it's just oh. that people who eat Cheerios, like people who have an apple a day, they just do other healthy things too, which makes them healthier. It's correlated. That's I it. used it before I got into Honey Nut Cheerios, and actually never got into Honey Nut Cheerios. I preferred actually dousing the honey on top of Cheerios back in the day. It probably tasted better. It did I mean, taste better. And then you throw raisins on top of that, and then the 12 grams of sugar in milk on top of that. <laughs> Think about all of a sudden how I, healthy these Cheerios be, are still. That's a mountain doing it. Lucky half. charms. You get 40 grams on the honey, you get probably another 20 in the raisins, that's 60. I get 72 including the milk. 
Cheerios have none. So having 72 grams of sugar for breakfast. But wait, there's more. You gotta have two bowls because they're going boy. Oh yeah, you'll be it's hungry in 20 minutes. It's 144 grams of sugar. Think about it. Back in the day, eating honey, which is nice good stuff. for you, and raisins with your milk in seemingly healthy Cheerios. And you're right. I always had. I was big in Cheerios too. I always had two bowls before mm -hmm. I went to school. And yeah, wow, that's. So you're at Mountain, I think it was a 12 ounce of Mountain Dew is about 45 grams. It's healthier to have a thing of Mountain Dew than it is for your bowl of Cheerios, so by that's that logic. A liter of Mountain Dew. A liter, you say? This is not Super Troopers. <laughs> and it's oh, a liter of cola. A liter of okay. cola. Just a liter. Who says liter of cola? Or Mountain Dew? We're talking about liters of blood. <laughs> Liters. Meow, uh, sir. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to turkey. Because ah, I eat a crap ton of turkey on Thanksgiving. And back really? in the day when I would eat bread, you gotta have leftovers, so you put the turkey you gotta put bread, turkey, throw potatoes on there on the inside. The potatoes the on one side. Sauce. Yes, thank you. Cranberry sauce, then stuffing, then you get your potatoes, and then turkey. And then maybe some green beans for good measure, and then do it again on the other side and then slap those two pieces of bread together. That sounds really good. Right? <laughs> what do you think? That's like the right way. An hour and a half after dinner because you need to snack. <laughs> because then you want more pie, I mean, and then you're exhausted and tired, so it had to be the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, turkey gets blamed for it because tryptophan starts with T and it's in turkey. And tryptophan is the precursor to serotonin and melatonin makes you sleepy. No cursing on this is a family show and a lot of this in the back. Did I just curse? You know, you said curse. I don't know what the oh, hell I said. What's going <laughs> on? It's so okay. Well, okay. No, turkey does not make you tired. All the carbohydrates and alcohol that we have during holidays, that's what puts us out. I mean, how do you get through <laughs> all that family time? <laughs> you start with mimosas for breakfast with the cinnamon rolls. Then politics comes in. Then you really got to get into the, the white wine. Then religion mm -hmm. happens. And then the reds come out. And then everyone talks about their gripes with each other. And then your scotches come out. <laughs> and the straight tequilas. Because it's dessert time. It's and, uh, family fun. And then it's 2 p.m. and you gotta eat. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're, so the whole turkey thing is uh, just to make it a little bit more cursed is that there's just as much tryptophan in almost every meat, uh, pork, beef, and there's more tryptophan in nuts, seeds, and What's cheese. <laughs> you're, you're full of tryptophan. You're full of tryptophan. <laughs> okay. full of tryptophan. <laughs> anyway, it's a family show. It's a family show. Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> Borderline, but we're meaty, there. You're a meaty man. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so how do we reverse this hyperglycemia? I, excuse me, hypo, hyper to hypoglycemia because we've got the insulin spikes, spikes and waves. You can show yourself a bunch of adrenaline in the thigh. You can do that. Ooh. We could do that, or perhaps we go exercise a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you exercise after you eat, it will greatly slow down the insulin response. You shouldn't crash, but I mean, I like the idea when I first thought about it and then realized when people overeat, exercise will probably make them puke, but yeah, ener fun. for energy, that was bad. slow, we'll cathartic walk. So here's a little biohack for Thanksgiving or big meals like this. Go take a nice 20 minute stroll first thing in the morning or perhaps even after meals later in the day, an hour before the meal. Take some berberine. Get yourself 500 milligrams of berberine up in there. Eat your meal. Up in there. Up in there. Eat your meal, and then go for a nice little stroll afterward. Now, true, all this stroll will make you more hungry, <laughs> but this will help regulate your uh, glucose insulin levels at the time. It will not, that shouldn't help as much the alcohol component, um, just throw that out there, but you can always drink more, it makes you more awake at first. At first. <laughs> Let's get into some chiropractic stuff. Yay! It's quackery. It's <laughs> This is a, it's about to be scandalous. I'm gonna make my little. That would be hard. I'm gonna make my little. Well, the wrist was one that hurt. Were you pinching the camera? No, I made a duck. Can I keep you? 
So let's go here about cracking knuckles. <laughs> yes. Why the people s taking all the fun away? People say that cracking your knuckles, cracking your joints excessively, thank you, is going to cause Help damage. Us. So, what have you say that about that? Huh? Tell me, Doc. <laughs> it doesn't do it. All right. So, what's that exactly happening? So, what is that audible release sound that we all hear? And why are we not doing like that bone on bone popping bones, as some people say? That was like eight things I wanted to yell at. You did it on purpose. Yeah, I know. Uh, which one should we go with first? It, it doesn't cause arthritis. We'll give it that way. Uh, people think that when you crack knuckles, especially when bend it down, bones rub together, causes inflammation, causes arthritis. Nothing in that statement is true except for the fact that some people do crack their knuckles by flexing them. The whole bone on bone thing, I'm just tired of hearing it. Almost never is there actually bone on bone. If someone told you that, that you see it in an x-ray, I'll go under the presumption that they're using it as an analogy to explain a situation is not necessarily true. If it does, I mean, rub your bone hard against the wall. It feels a lot different. It, it feels hurts. nice. A bone against the wall. Oh, the bone. Yeah. Just take the elbow bone and slam it into it. I guess. Um, it's just not happening. It doesn't cause inflammatory responses. The only kind of thing it might do over time is uh, cause hypermobility in your fingers, overstretch the ligaments a little bit if it's done routinely, not causing arthritis. Just, I don't know, get grip strength. Use the ARX, deadlift, do something. You'll use be the, fine. You can use fat grips on things. <laughs> Those things are awful. The, the little uh, squeezy hand grips. Um, but if you're just active with your hands, it shouldn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no real wrong reason. If you're really worried about just distract by pulling them out anyway, it will not then affect the ligaments or hypermobility issue, but you won't get arthritis either way from that. So when I got to high school, I was 14, and I thought... You were on path. I'm proud of you. I thought, thank goodness that chewing gum that I swallowed when I was playing Little League when I was seven <laughs> is finally going to pass now. Were you excited for waiting for it to pass, looking every time you went? I don't you expect do you? that. My rear smells like cinnamon, but thank you for asking. Is it because you chew a hundred times? It helps the way your poop smells. This, yeah. I know, that's what we talked about. Fletcherizing, yeah. So, there's that myth about chewing, uh, swallowing gum, excuse me, and it takes seven years for it to pass. What's up with that? It's a myth. Okay. So... <laughs> or we could just just it like mouth. swallowing a watermelon seed, you will not grow watermelons in your belly. I don't know, there was an episode of Rugrats back in the day, they showed that, because then they shrunk the Rugrats to go in and stop the watermelon I seed. I know, I know. You're telling me Nickelodeon lied. Uh, well, have you seen Ren and Stumpy? I'm just saying. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, Spongebob Squarepants. I mean, come on, Nickelodeon, I would not trust for my uh, educational well, like, components. You get slimed with uh, Mark Summers on uh, Double Dare. Oh, I was totally slimed on Double Dare, FYI. Oh, it was it, Double Dare, I didn't know that. I knew you were slimed. I did, I did go, because living in Orlando and going to Universal all the time, so we go to the front and we get up there and they say, you have to be really loud and you have to say, me, 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 me. Okay, well that was me. So I'm like, so I get the front line loud. Okay, yeah, you. That's how I got on stage in the House of Blues. It just happens. Uh, yeah. Get up on stage with the Bush concert, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you just you just do what you gotta do. You gotta get loud in front of people's faces and go me 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 me. And then you'll be fine. That's the real story. How we met. She Almost got up like in my face and like me 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 me. Uh, it worked. Just saying. I have comments, but we said this is a big It's slime. So. It's all started with slime. <laughs> That's yeah, the comment okay. that I kept away from that as well. Watermelon gum, got it. Right, Doesn't so, stick uh, in your system. No, it, just, it not, goes through your system in about seven days. You poop it out. Seven days? Less than seven days. We're going high. I always now. joke with the kid. You're getting high on that one? They'll get a bubble. On gum, in your belly. And I'm glad because gum is also, in my opinion, the best cavity prevention tool ever, as long as you chew the sweet out and keep going, it's almost like a detox for your mouth. Great segue into the next topic about detoxes being healthy. Why? Detox. Why not? What up with that? 
detox is at first, uh, how do I say this nice? It's a junk term. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, it, it, I mean, it does. It's supposed to get rid of junk. Well, In your trunk. Anywhere. Anywhere. Front seat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> God, this was... Fridays. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, it's the crack Fridays. Junk drunk. <laughs> that doesn't help. Junk in your uh, drunk. Detox. Junk. So it helps remove toxins. <laughs> slime. So it's supposed to remove toxins from your body. And I love asking when people tell me about these toxins they're getting they're getting removed from these cleanses and fruit juices, and they just stare at me because they have no idea what the hell toxins are either. Uh, I mean, it's just a, it's a junk term. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. When we think of toxins, things that should be in our body, I presume we're talking about things like BPAs, uh, extra hormones, heavy metals. That's probably the most common one. The biggest ones, absolutely. Um, so we, and there are ways to cleanse. I hate these terms. There are ways to get rid of that stuff. Chelation therapy will get rid of heavy metals. But, I mean, our bodies have our own detox systems in there. It's not looking for like a supplement box or a certain fruit juice, drink a bunch of apples to keep the doctor and toxins away. It just doesn't work that way. Your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, these are meant to detox. So unless you're very unhealthy, you have a problem going on with your detox system, your body's doing it. And a little drinking apple juice for seven days isn't going to do it. It'll make you sick. Uh, it's My own thought for detoxes yes. is since the we have our lid lidneys, our liver and kidneys, <laughs> one organ now, <laughs> it's a new thing, <laughs> is to actually nourish them with the right foods. There are herbs, there are certain vegetation, um, water. That's a great <laughs> one. To actually flush everything out. You know, by consuming these on a daily basis, that's why I turn to, and it's not a pitch for any type of advertisement here, but Green Vibrance every day. It's got all them in it. It's a great product. And this Burdock, will give you dandelion, a uh, milk thistle. I mean, I can go on and on with all these different herbs. You put these together and you take them on a daily basis, it's going to have a build up in a good way. And it's really just nourishing the systems and the different organ systems. So like a lot with the precision nutrition that we do here, mm -hmm. we want to find, is there an organ system that may be deficient? Now we know to incorporate certain types of foods greater in abundance for those organ systems to help them along the way and help them do the job they're supposed to do. Same thing with the detox. I mean, you're not going to get your bones start unleashing tons of heavy metal like that because you take a pill or drink a shake. I mean, that's just not going to happen. You've got to go undergo these lifestyle changes. And a lot of these detoxes, I think, that work happen so because individuals for seven days stop eating garbage. So, hey, I feel better. This right. shake must have worked. Yeah, the only calorie restrictions as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, That's the best detox ever, is literally doing a seven day fast. It's really the only thing I consider a real detox mm -hmm. is, yeah, just don't eat for a while. Your body does actually, I'll say, clean itself out. I mean, apoptosis comes in, bad cells, scar tissue, tumors, all kinds of little marks will disappear, uh, build up in your muscle, different acids that build up will get broken down. That does actually detox itself. But yeah, that's your body doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Do nothing, and your body will clean itself up. Right. That's the detox. So if you're going to detox pain from a baby's gums, um, <laughs> what might you think? You're doing pretty well these. These are good segues, right? Yeah. So I grew up knowing this as a hot toddy, and then figured out later it's actually a drink, but a hot well, toddy was whiskey you give to kids. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a really fun song by Usher. Just saying. Uh. Okay. The Usher and Jay-Z, yep. Yes. This can do play that on the way home with this. We should. This baby in the baby seat. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> you're a hot toddy, she'll enjoy it too. Yes, she would. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I would have uh, painful gums from teething, my grandpa would say, my grandma, my parents, they'd rub it on. It would taste awful. I didn't think it worked at all, but it kept on happening. And it swished my mouth, it would burn. I don't know about you guys. And then there was Amicel, much better. <laughs> we actually, uh, I remember being given hot toddies for colds instead of the chicken soup. Uh, and I remember feeling fine. I didn't um, have that. No, nobody gave me. No, no, I didn't get the toddies. No one. <laughs> I did not get any hot toddies. But as far as the myth goes, I will say, I mean, it should work. Alcohol does inhibit pain. Morally aside, if you should give your kid alcohol or not, that's not what I'm trying to talk it's about. Very, very. I mean, 
they're very open to it, much more so than we I are. I let my kids chomp on frozen vegetables. That works great. Oh, yeah. You, oh, okay. There's those little nets. Athena would love the strawberries. Yep. You put that in and just you knock know, on it. Yeah, these little mushy net things. You they just work throw great. Some frozen veggies, frozen fruit, numbs them right up. Yeah, and that's then they, cool. do, they enjoyed it. The kids to this day still eat frozen vegetables because they just like the way they taste. Right. Huh. May have something to do with that, may yeah. not. Who that's knows? Cool. Yeah, it just numbs it right up. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. FYI. So when we were out in. California, uh, in San Francisco, our breakfast was supposed to be, I was looking forward to bacon, I thought they were going to have this tray of bacon that I could have loaded up on, have a coffee, sit there for 10-15 minutes before we go off on our trek. They had muffins. Not the same as bacon. Muffins and uh, little boxes of cereal, pretty much say, here Cheers. you go, and a quick leaf. Yeah. So, flakes. so, with our film guy, Ryan, I asked him, what do you want? I'll get double because I know you're a grown boy, you're going to eat anything. So I he got a muffin, I said, you want anything else? I mean, another muffin and a cereal, that was it. So he got two muffins, we're going out to the rental car, lo and behold, he drops one of the muffins. It hits the ground, lands there, I pick it up, he's like, three second roll? I'm like, dude, it hasn't even been three seconds, go for it. He threw it out. Now, did you go back and get another one? I really didn't care. <laughs> and even if I wanted to get him full, he was going to eat anyway, so it really didn't matter. Now we've seen things, we, we know the real answer, thanks to uh, Mythbusters there. Mythbusters! But there's that whole three second rule, five second rule, whatever you want to call 10 it. Ten second rule, twenty and minute rule. I firmly roll. believe that if you eat it off the ground, you're going to build your immune system up a little bit better. So who really cares? You would know, and how many having... times has that bitten you, and you're like, I don't know what I just ate, I don't know what this was from the kid. Did that did, did not kill after. me. Like, I'm it actually not, this one. It, it did not kill me. That day. which did not kill me made me stronger. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I mean, Frederick Meats. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, food drops on the floor, there's no significant difference in the amount of germs that gets on it from when you just touch on the floor to you wait two seconds, five seconds. Ten but, days. Ten days, but I... <laughs> Then the mold keeps coming off. So if you cut out the part of the mold, you're good. Uh, I've been with you on that. I mean, Ryan, say we eat off the floor, but some food I like. Yeah, I mean, if one of your pork chops fell on the floor, I would pick it up and I would eat the pork chop. It's happened. But you're right. The second the bacteria gets on it, it's on it. Microsecond. Yeah, they 20 minutes.